Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for that introduction. I would like to thank CBFS for inviting me here today to make this presentation on the HR. And I would like, I'm very happy to see my very good friend and colleague, uh, Mr. Ali Hamdan, to be here with us, the chairman of CBFS. We go back a long way, actually, going back to the school days. I won't say when that was. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the same school and in the same class, in fact. And after that, we worked together. So I'm very happy, uh, Ali, to see you uh, here. Today, so that I don't take too much time on the introduction, what we will be talking about is HR as a central force in the success of an organization. HR does not come on its own. It comes for a given purpose. And what we're going to talk about is from, that pers from the perspective of the success. And in particular, actually, we'll be talking about our experience in Bank Sohar. So basically, it's a case study. It's not a theoretical work. Obviously, theory goes into everything. And then after that, it's the way that you apply it that matters. This is our journey. We'll start off by talking about the path to organization success. What does it take? What are the elements? What are the pathways for a success of a given organization? And then after that, to bring in immediately the Bank, uh, bank Sohar story in terms of how it fits in that uh, pathway. After that, we'll talk at greater length on the uh, HR strategy within Bank Sohar and end up by looking at what that ended up with, what, did, uh, what was the end result of all the HR strategy and all of that. Manuel Kant, we always talk in Arabic, al insan and this is what the famous uh, philosopher said also, always recognize that human individuals are ends and do not use them as means to your end. Now, in economics, the first thing you learn is about the factors of production. And the human, uh, the people are supposed to be, you know, land, labor, capital, and management, and uh, people are supposed to be as one of the means of production. But really, you need to change that around. Yes, without people, you cannot do anything. But you have to treat them as if they are the end. And when you look at them as being the end, they feel that they are the human beings. And when, when they feel that they are the end, they will then create the success that you desire in that organization, whatever that organization is. What's the cycle? When we talk about the organization's success, let's talk about the elements within that. This is the way I see it, this is my personal view, that you need to have a vision. You need to follow that with a blueprint in terms of strategy. Moving on to the plan of action. And so the first three elements are the design part of it. And after that is the execution, how to execute the design. Then I have added one more um, in terms of the daily operations. For me, that is very important uh, because it's not just what you have in the vision, strategy, plan of action, execution, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you meet with a lot of challenges, with a lot of areas that you need to address. So the question becomes, how do you do that? And that becomes part of the success or otherwise of an organization. In all of this, obviously, it's people that make it, make it happen. Without people, nothing takes place. These are not machines. Even machines, incidentally, are made by people uh, at the end of the day. Vision is by the leaders. Strategy are by the people. So are the plan of action and so on and so forth. That's all this says. It's the obvious, but it need, what we need to remind ourselves. 
of the obvious. Now we go into each one of these uh, very quickly. The vision is that grand picture, that big picture that paints the way ahead, how you want the, your organization to be, what to look like, how to position it. So it's the what and the why. And within that, obviously, intrinsically, we will have the value system of the organization, because you need to have the value system to drive all of that, the lubricants. And obviously, then, the staff would come in terms of how to be motivated and how to move forward. That big picture, that grand picture, now the dream part of it have got to be more stratified is the how, the strategy. The strategy then, obviously, will, will before you formulate a strategy, you need to know what is the external environment, what's happening to the outside world, and what's your internal environment, your own capabilities, what are the resources that you have, what are the strengths and weaknesses that you have within. You have to look at all of that, because you need to get somewhere, a destination. And that destination would require the fuels, the resources, everything. And this is where the strategy comes in. And thereafter, in terms of setting priorities for the staff and also to empower them, and so on and so forth. But with a strategy, it's the destination. You have to get somewhere. You need to know where you are going. If you don't know where you're going, you end up anywhere. Once you have the strategy, then prior to the execution, you have to go into the details. And that is where the plan of, of action comes in, the POA. That is where you look in terms of how to be able to execute that prior to the execution. Who should be doing it, with what, and when. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. And in that, obviously, it's how you position your people, how you leverage your people, how you deploy your people becomes very important for that success. You have your design. You need to execute it. It's all very well to have a beautiful strategy, plan of action. But if you don't know how to execute it, then it has no meaning. It becomes an utter failure. So each one of these, of the, all of these steps are very important. These are all building blocks. But it ends up with the execution, how efficiently you'll be able to execute all of that. As I said, this is for me very important, the daily operations. You should not lose sight, just like if you're thinking of that, okay, this is my strategy, this is my plan, this is where I'm going. But along the way, there will be headwinds, and you have to deal with them. And if you, if you ignore those, then there is no success for you. And that's why for me, I added the daily operations part of it, because this is, I'm talking from experience actually. These are all things that I experience on a daily basis, what happens when you execute uh, things. And when you're doing the daily operations also, uh, you find that there are certain elements, there are certain assumptions that you have made in your strategy need to be changed. So with that, Daily operations, you can, there be, can be another feedback onto your uh, strategy, it's, can, can be modified. Your vision will remain the same. That's like the North Star. But the um, strategy and the plan of action, that can meet with changes, and it should. You should be malleable, you should be flexible, you should go with the landscape as it meets, you know, uh, you, on a day-to-day -day basis. So now we move on in terms of this cycle of success, what has been the experience of Bank Sohar. For me, when I became the CEO, uh, the first thing for me was HR. That's crucial, especially since if somebody comes in and he wants to institute changes, then the changes have got to be through the people, obviously. And it's not easy. It's not easy at all. 
We need to understand that it's not easy. Once we understand that, then we take it with the gravity and the seriousness that it deserves. And with the details. I like this quote from the chairman, the entrepreneur of Starbucks, Howard Schultz. He is the one who started, as you know, in the United States, this concept of the meeting place through a coffee shop, and then now it's all over the world, and there are others who are emulating it. It's now it's like chai karakir noma. <laughs> says, the discipline I believe so strongly in is HR, and it's the last discipline that gets funded. Marketing, manufacturing, all these things are important, but more often than not, the head of HR does not have a seat at the table, and that's a big mistake. You are imprinting decisions, values, and memories onto an organization. In a sense, you're building a house, and you can't add stories onto a house until you have the, built the kind of foundation that will support them. Absolutely correct. So you can see how important your role is. It's not simply to encourage the board to give better bonuses to the staff. <laughs> we started, as you all know, only seven years ago, we were the last uh, license that were given prior to the new Islamic banks for after many, many years. And in a short period of time, uh, we have been able to make our imprint, a deep imprint in the banking industry. We are today the fourth largest lender, and we are by far the most profitable bank, finally enough. Bank Sohar has acted against gravity, so to speak. We were 1.55, now we are 1.05, come down by one third in one year. And in any metrics you take, you find that we are doing extremely well, whether it's productivity, staff productivity, efficiency ratios, we are at par with the best. And that is saying something. It is saying something because of the age of the institution. If you look at the other banks in the history of Oman, you find by the age of seven, they are about to go under or were already under, actually, and taken over by other banks. While with Bank Sohar, not only are we there, but we are the best performing. And obviously, HR plays a central role in all of that. What's our vision? We started off by talking about one-stop financial super mall, having boutiques of products and services across various segments, each with a unique set of propositions. Unique set of propositions. And that is what drives us. And if we go to the mission part of it. We are an entrepreneurial organization. It doesn't say bank, it says organization. Why I'm saying that? There's a reason for it. That creates innovative solutions to delight different segments of society and enrich our economy at large. In today's world, any company that you take, you find that there are competitors. The boundaries, uh, competitors from other sectors, from other uh, uh, segments of the economy. The boundaries of operation, of products, of services, of being in an economy are changing. And we need to recognize that also as a bank that we need to change. But still, the basic mission is the same. And the fact that we are dealing with a, lev it's a leveraged institution and it's so central to the economy, it means that the risk part has to be adhered to no matter what. Whatever we do, we first look at risk. And we have seen, as Bank Sohar, despite our 
tremendous growth. It has been growing in a very healthy manner because we are, all our metrics are showing very positively, and most importantly, our NPAs, non-performing assets, have been improving rather than getting worse. Obviously, HR comes in again. This is uh, Peter Drucker, uh, the father of management, uh, talks about management is doing things right while leadership is doing the right things. Uh, doing things right is efficiency and uh, doing the right things uh, is uh, effectiveness. So the, it means that you might be doing very well in what you're doing, but are you doing the right thing? So we need to remind ourselves all the time about this. For us, if we look at Bank Sohar, when we first started, the first two years, it was all about market share. And there's a reason for that. When you start, we looked at the history of the other banks. And we took the learnings from there. And we found we had to grow rapidly to start off with, in terms of phase one. We needed to grow rapidly in order to, one, have the benefits associated with that in terms of the economies of scale, economies of scope, but also in terms of instilling confidence to the stakeholders, especially the stakeholders who work with us on a daily basis. And here I'm talking about our correspondent banks in terms of giving us various lines, in terms of our depositors, in terms of borrowers, and also in terms of our internal customers, the employees. The employees need to know that they are in a bank that is growing and, and growing strongly. So that was important for us to work on, to start off with in terms of market share. And that was the first two years. But immediately after that, in fact, when I took over, I looked at that element and I found that we have reached the critical mass that we desire. We needed now to move on to the next phase, which was, which I call the profit share. Market share, moving on to that profit share. Now, to do that was not easy. Not easy because of the people and the entrenched culture that was there. Because each one, each phase has got a completely different dynamics from the people standpoint. Market share is easy to do. You just throw money. You don't have to make that much profit. Obviously, you can grow very quickly. When you give, and it's only giving, it's, it's not difficult to grow the market share. But the tough part was to move on to the profit share part of it. Because to move on to the profit share, it meant working a completely different way. It meant that the people, the internal customers, our staff, needed to think differently, needed to charge higher rates on our assets rather than lower rates, which means that they have to go and convince the customers, the external customers, that it, you know, to, be, uh, to still operate with us, to still be our customers, which meant that we have to give other services so the people had to work in a different manner, the HR part of it. So what was the challenge? It's changing the mindsets of, of the staff. Instead of accepting the old ways, move on to the new ways. It meant both working harder as well as smarter. I always say working smarter is much more important than working harder. Because one hour of smart work can be 100 hours of hard work, and we don't know what you're doing.
So there's a lot we had to do in terms of uh, getting, making that change. We all know change isn't easy. There's always resistance. You know what they say about inertia. When you're in a state of inertia, it takes great force for movement to take place, for momentum to take place. And once momentum is there, then it moves on its own. One of the things that we did, immediately in fact, was to review our appraisal, the HR appraisal system, because we wanted the people to feel it. We wanted the staff to feel it, to feel the change. So that was a very important uh, exercise for us and crucial to our strategy. With that, what we did, we looked at our strategy overall. And we aligned that strategy with the HR, uh, HR appraisal system and with the different divisions and with the different grades and so on and so forth. And then we communicated and communicated and communicated with our people to understand that this is what it takes for you. If you think, if you're going to prove yourself to be successful, your success in terms of what you're doing has got to be aligned with the vision and the strategy of the bank, the new strategy of the bank. The performance appraisal also meant that you get away from the human subjected value judgment. We all humans. We always like, as a superior, to be, to be seen to be good. There's no doubt about it. So by bringing in other indicators, other metrics, more formal ones, more objective ones, you're really making life of the superior easier. But at the same time, you afford greater clarity and uh, onto this exercise. And it has enormous impact, as I said, on the uh, operation of the institution thereafter. Having said that, when we started the performance, of, um, incidentally, we then assigned uh, an expert consultant to do that for us, and we gave them a given short period of time. But we were, at, we were working with them very, very closely. Because, you know, with any consultants, they come with preconceived ideas. And if you are an institution that's trying to do things differently from others, then you have to bring in your thoughts, your ideas into it, and your inputs. And this is what we do all the time, actually. And this is what uh, it took a long time for us to try to improve on that. And we are still doing it as of, in fact, a couple of days ago, we were uh, meeting in terms of further and further improvement. You are never there on something like this. It's an ongoing exercise, but it's a crucial exercise because everybody talks about it. All the staff talk about this all the time. They argue on it, they discuss it, which is fine. Yet at the same time, you don't just stick with it. You don't stick, in the, you do stick with it, but you should give yourself the freedom to make changes along the way because everything, at the end of the day, it's all about the experience that you gain on something, and you have to change all the time. You should never stay stuck with anything. Whatever that idea is, whatever exercise that you do, you should always be cognizant of your experience and make the most out of that and build it in, again, as a matter of general rule. So resistance, we had plenty of. How did we deal with it? I had to sit with all the AGMs and everybody on a daily basis, with each one of them separately, because each, one of the, uh, each department is different. So each department has got different dynamics, and the change that is required in each one of them is different than the other. And I had to do it in the beginning myself, in order to bring in the new way of doing things. 
start with logic, obviously. But at the same time, I knew that that is not enough. They have to feel the fruits of success, whatever those small successes are, to give them the confidence that we are on the right track. Which is, and that we did, and we were, we were able to do that very well. In fact, in my first year, we went from a minus two million real, minus two million real profits to an eight million real profits, which was 8% of our capital at that time. So it was a huge growth. Obviously, when the staff, they see that, they say, yes, we can do it. It can be done. And this was done on a quarterly basis. The results were seen on a quarterly basis. Confidence will grow as you show them that things can be done. So that is very important from an HR standpoint. As I said, in terms of a plan of action, we had to move from a given way of thinking to another way of thinking. However, the customer is always there because without customers, we are nothing. Our whole raison d'etre is the custom. And in fact, that's the case in anything, anywhere, whether it's a political organization, commercial organization, profit making or non-profit making. It's the custom. There is always, you're doing it for somebody. So if you don't please that somebody, you are not successful. And in this plan of action, obviously, um, we have to deal with all elements of it. Include, so it's not just in terms of the revenue side, there's also on the expenditure side. And there comes in things like the cost efficiency, the operational efficiency, the process efficiency. And we identified each and every element in that. And what does it take from the people to do it? Again, the resistance. When a department can inc was enjoying increases in staff, whatever they want, and then all of a sudden you tell them, no, sorry, things have changed. What's the reaction? Again, this is the science of change. How do you instill the change within the people. People wanted empires. We say, no, we are not here for empires. We are here for efficiency. We are here for effectiveness. We are here to show that we to please our customers, to please our internal customers as well as external customers. And this has to show at the end of the day in our bottom line. So one of the things that we did was, I mean, obviously the biggest cost is that of, uh, you know, biggest element is the HR in terms of the people. And within that, it is a numbers game, numbers challenge, that is one. But it's also the quality that they bring and the productivity with which they operate. So at early on, within this phase two, we commissioned a study, uh, an international consultant to come on board to study our organization from the people's perspective for each, on each and every one of our people in terms of what they're doing, as well as how much they should be doing and where is the gap within that. And at the same time, the way we did it is that we involved, very much involved, the people themselves, the heads of those units. That's another thing, obviously. You must have the ownership of the people. If you don't have the ownership, then people will work half-heartedly. I always believe it should come from within, not without. Again, it's not easy. But that's how we should do it. We should strive towards that. 
Work from within, from your heart. People should be working from within. They, they really want to do this. 